Hey guys, this is Richard of Fishonado Channel and we are here in the show floor of Magna and this is the awesome, amazing press booth that they presented us, content providers. And I'm here with none other than the man, the myth, the legend. I don't know about the, all of that, but... <laughs> in the aquarium lighting world, we're with Tulio of Reef Brights, and we're here to talk about some, some of the lights, information, and some of the misinformation that, that's out there. And he's here to set the record straight. Okay. Julia, how are you? Good, good, good. And and you know, just to correct you on the whole legend thing, all <laughs> that means is I've been doing this way too long. You know, and but that that's what gives you the credibility because you're in you've been doing it for so long. You're so knowledgeable in this kind of subject. You know, because I mean, you you basically pioneered the way of LED lighting. Um, for the most part, yeah, that is a correct statement. That yes. is a correct statement. For the most part, whenever you're online, social media and stuff like that, uh, what are some things that you see and that you're like, ooh, that's just wrong. I guess the biggest the biggest thing I would say is the confusion between or I shouldn't say confusion more the association of color and spectrum okay they're two completely different things and even Kelvin for example uh, I could have three different light sources regardless of whether they're LEDs halides whatever the light source is it doesn't really matter mm -hmm. um, and each one of these light sources can be listed or classified as a specific Kelvin, mm -hmm. but they'll appear completely different yeah. to the human eye and went over the aquarium. Right. Now that difference in appearance also means that the spectral component of the device, whether it be LED or what have you, is also different. Right. Okay, so, so the, that confusion with color, because the other problem with Kelvin, Kelvin, uh, Kelvin color, things like that, it's all based on human eye response, mm -hmm. okay? Now with spectrum, the reason why spectrum kind of exists unto itself is, for example, just in the visible region, which is what the human eye can perceive, Yes. we have over 300 wavelengths of light. Okay. So now, just a quick question. Is, is there any term, phrase, word, or anything that you could possibly imagine mm -hmm. to describe 300 independent things happening simultaneously in one word, sentence, or phrase? You just can't do that. Yeah. So therefore you have spectral intensity. Okay. And spectral intensity can only be determined with spectrometers and very specific tools, yeah. Right. Yes. yes. So so when we talk about color or, or even PAR, which is a fantastic mechanism, mm -hmm. again it doesn't really tell us about the spectral composition. Right. We're just looking at quantum flux, which is a fancy word of photons. Mm -hmm. It it can't tell you where they're you know where they're coming from, wavelengths, other things like that. Right. It's just telling Telling you the aggregate of photons and, and what happens. Right. Do you know what light really is? Obviously, you know the core component, which is the photon. Right. Right. Well, if you really consider what a photon truly is, mm -hmm. it's a mechanism in which atoms and things like this exchange energy. Mm -hmm. Matter exchanges energy. Yeah. See, we don't see light. In fact, the human eye, mm -hmm. you don't see light. Mm -hmm. When the photon strikes the photoreceptors in the back of your eye, photochemical reactions take place, mm -hmm. converting that energy into a signal yeah. that the brain then processes. Right. Kind of like a CCD on your camera. Right, very, right, right. You know, very similar mechanisms. So for example, even photosynthesis mm -hmm. is a photochemical reaction. Mm -hmm. So when you look at light from a terms of energy, right. now it starts to take on whole new meanings because what that energy does, aside from photosynthesis, synthesis and other things. It also plays important roles in other processes. For example, I'll, re I'll refer to us as, you know, humans again, UV, vitamin D. Right. Now, we're not a photosynthetic organism, but we need UV to help our body process vitamin D. Correct. So there's just one example. I mean, has your wife ever had her nails done? Mm -hmm. You know how they put the... Right, on the UV, the, UV lights, it, yeah. Again, there's an interaction of light. So these photochemical responses, in fact, even... even it, if you look at the uh, medical mm -hmm. definition for what actinic is, mm -hmm. okay, it, 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 it's all about photochemistry, photochemical responses. Gotcha. So now, now to, to bring that full circle, if we were talking about color, right. 
you see there's no association there. Mm -hmm. Color is just blue or red or right. it's what we perceive then you know you have varying views and things like that but it's a whole it's a whole different science. Right, right. There is such a thing as color science. Yeah. But it's different than Now, why do you think that people just like, kind of like lumped it together? I think Maybe a it theory. Was more, <laughs> well, you know, I think it was more that in the beginning, in the beginning, of course, uh, uh, all of us had a lot to learn. Right. You know, and when I mean the beginning, I'm going back, you know, each one of these gray hairs represents uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> an amount of time. Mm -hmm. But so I think that back in the beginning, for example, uh, I know you're good friends with Julian. Yes. Right? And in, in fact, I will say this, it was actually Julian's book, uh, one of the original books that him and Delbeck wrote. Right. Okay. That got me started with the whole lighting Really? Okay. Path, okay. But even back in the day, we were we we used to look at things in terms of watts per gallon. Mm -hmm. So right, if you right. were using X number of watts per gallon, then you're okay. That yeah. was that was okay. Now here's the fascinating thing about that. Two things. One, we discovered that let's say if you were running a 175 watt halide back mm -hmm. then, you found that hey, if I ran a 250 things seem to do better. Mm -hmm. Well, it really wasn't the wattage. We've discovered that now. But basically what it was was that in the 250 watt version of that light source, there was just more of the beneficial stuff. If you right. think of it in terms of ratios, mm -hmm. you see what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So more gave you more of the beneficial stuff. But here's the fascinating thing, and I'm, I'm still trying to answer this question. In many ways and cases, the watt per gallon rule of thumb mm -hmm. still holds water. Coincidental or not, it, it's still, yeah. you know what I mean? It's still right, holds right, right. water, and I think that's fascinating. Hmm, it, it is very interesting, because when I first got into the hobby, you know, like back in the days, you know, we had the, the PC compact lights yeah. and stuff like that. Yep. You know, we had metal highlights, and then like, you know, a long different type of, different type of light sources. And, you know, I, I actually read a lot about that watts per gallon. Yep. You know, so I was like, huh, okay, this, this kind of took me back on a trip. Yep. <laughs> but yes, but and, it's very interesting. And here's the thing, for example, you mentioned power compact, right? Yes. I'm sure you kept very successful tanks with your power compact. Yes. Yeah. So, so now, is, is that, you know, does that mean you can't, you, you see what I mean? I've seen so many, the one wonderful thing about science is, mm -hmm. and this is what's wonderful about nature as well, Everything we think we know, mm -hmm. there will always be the exception. Right, right. So, you know, after doing this for so many years, I've seen tanks under PCs, T5s, LEDs, halides, mm -hmm. um, and, and even in many of my talks, yeah. um, I will, yes, you can keep a tank under LEDs, you can keep a tank under this, you can keep a tank under that. It's really more application-based. Right. And the one thing I'd like to say, because I know we have a finite amount of time here with the interview, is the other thing that I would like to touch on is that oftentimes when we discuss lighting, mm -hmm. we speak in terms of absolutes. Okay. This is the best, or that's the best, or this is the best. Well, what's best is based on application, meaning that depending on the type of tank you're trying to set up. Right, right, that's, that's, that's very that important. Will, that will, well, yeah, because, okay, I, I know you speak to a lot of people online, right? Mm -hmm. So I'll give you a perfect example. Let's say somebody's using a Radeon, which is a great light, okay, mm -hmm. great, great product, great light. So this guy's using a Radeon in his tank, and this guy's using a Radeon in his tank. Now, this guy's using this light setting, which seems to work fantastic for him. Mm -hmm. Now, this guy tries this guy's light setting because, hey, this has been working for me, but for some reason, that same light setting doesn't work the same on his tank. Right. It's because it's a different, back to the energy. We were talking about the spectral thing. Yes. Basically, all of, when you look at corals, mm -hmm. they have energy requirements. Right. Part of the requirement comes from light or mm -hmm. photosynthesis. The other part of the requirement is nutrient intake, whether it's food elements and other things like this. Mm -hmm. Now, are all corals the same? No, of course not. So they're gonna have different energy balance and different energy requirements. Right, right. So you can't lump everything into one, you know, I, I believe in one of the other interviews uh, we did, I think with some blog or something that, that you did. Yes. You asked me, you know, what is the perfect light source? And I, I still remember my response and saying, 
There isn't one. Mm -hmm. You know, there isn't one. Right. And and again, I can go back to, to, to just commonly available technology. When you think about automobiles, projectors, and all these different devices, if you walk into Home Depot or Lowe's today, even mm -hmm. still, you see all these different bulbs and sizes and lamps. Right. So, you know, we've been manufacturing, you know, well, not we as a company, I'm just saying in general, you know, whether it's Philips or whatever the companies that have been working with them, lights have been, you know, light sources have been available available for probably close to 100 years, if not more. Right. So why do we still have so many lamps today? Mm -hmm. Or light sources, whether they be halogen, this source, that source, fluorescent, this and that. Right. Because each works best in a given application. Right. One of the things I'd like to say, you know, as the last thing, and maybe we're kind of getting back to one of the things, sure. I just want to state how important it is that there is no absolute. Mm -hmm. You can have fabulous tanks under LEDs. You can have fabulous tanks under T5s. Mm -hmm. You can have fabulous tanks under combinations mm -hmm. of said lighting. You can have fabulous tanks with metal halides. There is no one... You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. There is no one absolute. There is no one absolute, and that's, that's you know, very important. All right, guys. This was an amazing talk by Tulio. Um, I hope you guys like to take some time, absorb all this information, and, you know, just, just have some, you know, this, these were very thought-provoking, um, you know, like statements, as well as facts that he's just, you know, put out for you guys. And, you know, just know that, know that there, is, there is more than one ways to have a successful tick. And there's a million different ways to, you know, like I have a have a great reef system, and this, and lighting is just one of them. And but they are very important. Find your, what application that you're gonna use for and utilize it properly. <laughs> All right, guys, this is Richard of the Fish and Nautil Channel. I was here with Tulio at Show Floor of Magna. You guys have a great day. Take care, everyone. Richard, thank you. Thanks.